Hello guys and gals, I'm Paladin, and welcome to Pal Plays, a channel dedicated to gutter speak free commentary. In the last 76 episodes of Okami, we have followed the story of Amaterasu, the Japanese sun goddess who we discovered just last episode was held in prison in Nippon. Nippon was her prison. She did not belong there. She belongs in the celestial plane, overseeing what is essentially all of creation. But she was forced to Earth by Orochi, by the evil that we defeated last episode. And thus, this episode, we're going to be fighting Yami, the ruler of darkness, the last obstacle that stands between her and returning to the celestial plane, where she can restore both herself and the other, de other brush gods to their former glory, so she can assume her true form. This, she is weaker right now than she was 100 years ago. She has slowly deteriorated into what you see now. Though still very, very powerful, and she has overcome many odds in this form, this is not her full power. And so, we are going to try to defeat the Ruler of Darkness this episode, so she can achieve that. Let's go. Oh, before... actually, wait. Before that happens, that was actually... That was actually pretty climactic, but before that happens, I would like to show you guys my inventory. I haven't changed anything, but if you're just joining me, I would like you to know what I have going into this battle. I have a lot of healing items, a lot of offensive items, even though I I kind of have a thing against exorcism slips because they don't do much and they're expensive, but I have them. And I have Steel Fist Sakes, which I can really get behind, and Steel Soul, along with Vengeance Slips that I can fall back on in case this battle proved too hard. Um, as for my, what are they called, Holy Artifacts or whatever, I have the Fire Tablet because it will grant me immunity to fire damage. Um, I have the Golden Lucky Cat, though it will be completely useless. I still have it because it's I've had it the entire LP. I also have the Golden Ink Pot, which... Grant, this is probably the only helpful item I I have here. Um, it will allow my it will triple my ink restoration speed. Just so you know what I have going into this. Um, as for weapons, I have the Tundra beads equipped and the Resurrection beads, so I get the same type of type attack bonus. I need to remember to try to use my sub uh, my sub rosaries because that that might be useful. I don't know. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, as for as for stats, I have full everything going into this. I am 100% full on all stats. I have 50. What is that? I have 50,000 yen going into this, and I don't need any yen at all. So I don't know. It's an added perk. I I can't really. I'm not going to buy anything because it's just overkill. And I'd like to say I went to the end of the let's play with money in my pocket. Um, also, I would like to apologize for something. This episode is pretty late, but. I, I have good re I have good reason. Well, I have two good reasons. The first is I went to a camp um, with some people from a church over the weekend, and we and like I totally wore out my voice. So today is the first day that I feel like my voice is completely back to what it was. Uh, I did try to record the day before, but it just didn't work out. So this is the first episode that I can actually record with my voice being up to snuff. And also, this is. This is a good excuse, and also a, a good flaw that I need to work on. I am inexperienced in this. I am very inexperienced with ending a Let's Play. If you think about it, I've only done it. I've only ended a big Let's Play once before, and that was Skyward Sword. Granted, I did end Pikmin, but I didn't really feel like that was an ending, because the, the Let's Play was so short. I didn't feel like I was ending some grand adventure. I, I felt like it was just a funsy LP. So, in a sense... I am still back months ago, months and months, to where I was when I first started this game. I am still very inexperienced in ending Let's Plays, and that's that's made me really scared to start this episode. So, hopefully, I won't be stuttering the entire time and being really nervous, because I'm nervous in both the game's story as uh, aspect and also my commentary. I've been worried about this for a long time. I always dread the end of a Let's Play, and this is no exception. Stupid swastika and s squiggle snake. So anyway, uh, that being said, I think that I can I can stop procrastinating. I will embrace my fear, accept it, and walk forward into the light that will bring us to the final battle. Okami Amaterasu, just being able to see you with my own eyes, I cannot tell you how much joy it brings me. It pains me that I cannot remain with you until the end. 
but I know that you won't let us down. Now I must join the others, but I'll never forget you and how we used to play in the fields in our homeland. I pray that you will always shine bright, Amaterasu. Bye, Marco! Plier. Record Five Nights at Freddy's 3 for me, please! There you are, Amaterasu! I thought I could handle this before you arrived. But it seems I have met my match. <laughs> this brings back memories, Mashare. Remember when we faced Orochi together on the Celestial Plain? Behold! It is shrouded in darkness, but make no mistake. This is none other than Yami, the evil ruler of darkness. It was he who slew the Celestials on board this very Ark, and brought misfortune upon the land of mi mortals. Of course, it's too dark to see his true form now. And so it begins. The dreaded Day of Darkness is upon us. Distorted time and space brings about this phenomenon. This ill-fated day only occurs once every 100 years. Nobody, not even the gods, has the power to stop it. Still, I shall stand firm and fight this battle. For it was I who brought the Ark of Yamato to the Celestial Plain. But I was oblivious to the evil that lurked in its depths. I caused the death of countless innocent Celestials and brought a curse upon the land of mortals. However, I cannot reset my actions nor undo the past. Amaterasu, Orochi can only be defeated with the power of the Chosen One. That's what I told you, and you waited for me without question. You waited patiently in this land of mortals. You waited for the day that Nagi, the Chosen One, was born. You believed in me despite knowing that I count myself among the ranks of the accursed Moon Tribe who had escaped from the Lunar Realm. I was deeply moved by your earnest spirit. That is why my faith in you has not waned since that fateful day, when we engaged Orochi in battle side by side. Amaterasu, you must return to the Celestial Plain. 
You must do so in order to bring peace to this world. The fight with Yami, it's been an entire game in the making, and finally we're able to face the master of all these evil creations. This form is theorized to represent humanity's desire to destroy, as it will d be destroying parts of this battlefield a lot. It will be trying to destroy either, pound either us into the ground with a hammer or its body, or the arena itself. Uh, if we attack it, we do not have our our divine instrument, so we have to attack it with what gifts are given to us in a curse zone. Very fitting, since this is the lord of all the curse zones we, fa we have encountered thus far. We still have our godhood though, so we can rely upon that. And we have the enhanced stats that I've re also relied on the entire game. However, as this progresses, you have to be very careful because there are holes in the battlefield all over the place. And you have to be ready to jump at a moment's notice, or else you'll get hurt. Uh, I lost some. I lost all my god there. So let's use a godly charm. Fall back on that. But we can still deal de deal damage to him. I, I sound like a I sound like a cartoon. The character there. Deal, 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 deal. But upon dealing enough damage, he'll release a celestial brush technique, the first we ever acquired, and the first we will acquire in this fight. Rejuvenation. But with that, even though Rejuvenation isn't the most useful technique, it is very useful here because we can patch all the holes in the battlefield. Like so. They're as good as new. However, be very careful. Snap, that almost hurt. Be very... Ow. Be very careful um, because you cannot patch those di divots. He has to pound an area twice in order for a hole to be created. Um, but you, can't, you cannot heal the ones that are just divots. You have to wait until they're like this. So you still should not st stick around on the divots because those can be very dangerous. But like I was saying beforehand, before I, I start talking about that, um, it's actually better, th it's actually very good that we got uh, rejuvenation because even though it's not the best, it, and it grants us access to all of our divine instruments. So we can deal a lot more damage than before. Uh, I need to get out of here and get to the middle of the arena. Uh, we do not have Power Slash, so we cannot actually... Snap, I lost that again. Well, I'm not going to be using it again. I'm just going to run. Run. Jump. I also have my Double Jump now, which I didn't have before. But I need to deal some more damage to him. There. So I can get another technique. The second technique we ever acquired, which is Power Slash. This is also very useful because it will enable us to deal a lot more damage. We can attack him when he's gray here and power slash him. Now remember, we're not just getting power slash in this deal. We are getting power slash one and, uh, sorry, one, two, and three, which will grant us the ability to do a lot more damage, like so. I'll deal some more damage here while he's vulnerable, and then I'll power slash to do the maximum amount of damage possible. And this technique is Bloom, a.k.a. Green Sprout. And this is also useful because now when he's gray, we don't have to use Power Slash. We can open him up, hopefully, with Bloom. There we go. And that will enable us to jump on top of him and deal damage directly to his core instead of the, the apparatus that contains it. And that will end the second phase. Do not worry about all the divots. I almost fell in one because they will disappear with the end of this phase and the beginning of another. This phase is often, often theorized to represent humanity's desire to burn, to destroy things with fire. And wow, he can deal damage through our godhood, so be very careful. Those strafing attacks are pretty devastating, so just mind those and keep running. Do not spend time in the air, because that is a bad idea. Uh, next. See, we do not have anything to put out this fire. 
he will split into separate platforms and attack us. This actually is easily dodged just by jumping. Do not run because they are horizontal swings, not vertical. Uh, if you keep your speed up, that's actually very good for when he chooses to do this. He will be swiping at you or stabbing at you, but if you just keep running to the side, whoa! 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 Oh my, wow. That was, you see how fast that was? He was like lightning. But anyway, in this phase, like I said, he's focused on fire, so he'll be dealing mostly fire attacks. Now, I did say that fire t the fire tablet will grant some immunity to this fire, but it won't, because this fire comes with a power that our, our holy artifacts are not able to counter. But the first technique we'll get for damaging him is... Cherry Bomb, given to us by Tama. Thank you, Tama. And this will lab will enable us to blow him up, splitting him into the separate flat platforms, and his core will be randomly placed on one of them. Now be careful here, because when he decides to reunite, you can be crushed between the platforms. You have to be very cautious of this. Oh, that was close. I almost took I almost bit it there. But that gave that did enough damage to give us Inferno, which. Oh wait, no, sorry, it's not Inferno, it's Water Spout. My bad. Now this will be invaluable in this fight, because we can now put out his fire, stunning him instantly, like that. That's very, very useful. Now we can stun him and then use Cherry Bomb, come on, blow up, to split him apart instantly, and very easily, might I add. So this form now doesn't really have much menace, because we can douse him at will. Uh, I would like to use a uh, battle item here. I'm going to use Steel Fist Sake. I don't need anything else, but I just want to deal more damage. Let's go ahead and jump off here. And come on. Give me another technique. This technique is the much-loved Crescent, which enabled us to turn day into night. But here, it will do something a little bit different. He will be stunned, and instead of using uh, Cherry Bomb on him, we will be using Crescent because it will summon the Spirit of Nagi to chop him in half and expose his core. This is very useful. It will allow us to deal more damage to him because he's going to be vulnerable for a longer amount of time. I also have a Steel Fist Sake going on here, so I did a lot of damage there. This is a problem. We cannot dodge this attack because it does not use fire at all. But if you just stay in the air, you should be fairly safe. Fairly safe. Emphasis on fairly. But I really like this battle, how we've been forced to use everything we have, everything we have had in this ba in this game. We, um, we first had to use no brush techniques, because we started with no brush techniques. Then we had to use what we used in Curse Zones. Also, why am I doing this? I can just use Crescent. And now we're, just for we're forced to use the same abilities we had at different stages of the game. So we're essentially making the same journey that we made before, all over again. Let's see, he's, all, he's at a sliver of health. One more attack, and he should be he should be gone. Let's see, I'm running here. Yes, I'm at full speed. He should miss. Hopefully. Hopefully he'll miss. Oh, wow, he's, he's a good shot. Not a good shot, but he's a good swing. He has a great swing. So, what else do you have? Open yourself up. Fire? Oh, 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 oh. I dealt with that a long time ago. Nagi, come here. It's also interesting that the spirit of someone who we've encountered on our adventure is helping us. The two, the two legends, uh, uh, that of Amaterasu and Shirnui, are being intertwined to become one gigantic tale of the past and the present being fused. But we're on to the next form. This form, Yami no longer goes on the offensive. He goes on the counter-offensive. He's trying to... Uh, make us slip up by attacking him, but the attacks that he he counters with are not that strong. Well, they're deflectable. They're defeatable. We can use our brush techniques to deflect the cursed fruits that he shoots at us. Uh, you have to be really on the ball here. That was perfect. That was a great hit, and we can deal damage to him this way. That that did all of them. That was fantastic. I deflected all of them, but like one. Okay, next, let's go ahead and power slash this to stop the slides. Now, when when a blue orb shows, 
That means you've dealt enough damage to weaken him and have him release a Celestial Brush technique. In this case, it will be Gale Storm, which will enable us to deflect an attack that he has not used yet, but will very, very soon. This, fire, if we use Gale Storm here, it will blow it all away and none of it will hit us. Okay, but this is not, this phase, you're not actually, you're not actually doing, wow, wow, that was really good. Next brush technique is, wow, Inferno. That was quick. But yeah, like I was saying, this this phase is very counter-offensive. We're not supposed to run around and try to deal damage. We're just supposed to stand in one place and counter his attacks with our own. So this phase is actually very simple and very easy if you know what to do. Come on, open up again. And I guess I should mention what this, this phase is supposed to represent, since all of the phases represent uh, our evil desires. This one is no different. This repre this is theorized to represent humanity's desire to destroy. Or, sorry, my bad. That was the first one. Humanity's desire to gamble. That would make no sense if it was de desire to destroy. But anyway, there was this fire attack, and we also got a spirit globe, which healed us. So you can see that his, his own strategy can be harming him. But this is actually pretty good, because that gives us another brush technique already. And this brush technique is my favorite. You guys know this for a fact. It is Veil of Mist, which will give us so much in this battle. It will help us avoid his attacks and also give us more time to deal damage. However, it also serves a, s a special purpose in this battle. Um, you remember how Crescent Moon uh, enabled us to summon the spirit. Oh, that's good. Come on, deal damage. It enabled us to summon the spirit of Nagi, who would chop him in half. Well, if we, you, we use Veil of Mist here. I won't use it right now because I'm busy. If we use Veil of Mist, it'll actually summon yet another spirit. Oh, wow, that hurt. That really hurt. Come on. Is this the last, the end of his phase? You can power slash that one. Oh, ow, ow. Let me, uh, I, I neglected to do this. Let's use a godly charm and also use a healing item because we actually needed it. Uh, that's, that's good. I took some damage there, but it's fine. Okay, let's power slash him. Okay, here's a bomb, a new attack. We can use Inferno, which we have now, to blow up the bombs and deal damage to him. And this actually ended his third phase, and we'll move on to the fourth. Yeah, it's actually a boss that has more than three phases. You would never believe it. But yeah, his third phase is theorized to represent humanity's desire to destroy with technology. It seems that whenever we create something with technology, it turns out as a fluke and it ends up causing more harm than good. He'll be shooting us with lasers, shooting us with rockets, strafing the arena with bombs, or just standing in place and shooting lasers. He can also do this. We cannot counter this, sadly. Uh, he will summon nine strikes, or actually, what if nine, nine Tails Nine Strike was a borrowed weapon from Yami? What if? But anyway, this strafing attack is very hard to avoid because he will be changing directions a lot. Uh, these Dogu Rockets, or Clay clay Soldier Rockets, um, are easy to deflect. We just use we just use Power Slash, and he will... Oh, he closed. Snap. But actually, that's fine, because it gives us an, uh, another brush technique. This time, it's a bit of a strange one. It is Catwalk. Now, this one cannot be used offensively. Well, it indirectly can. You'll see on the sides of the arena, there are uh, there are Catwalk statues. You can actually climb those pillars, and there will be tr chests with battle items in them. Very interesting. But anyway, uh, let's go ahead and use Veil of Mist here, and we'll see the spirit of Queen Himiko giving us health. So she's helping us as well. We see all these people who their lives were given in the struggle to rid Nippon of the curse that has that has um, held it captive for over 200 years. And we see all these spirits trying to help us because this is the final battle. This is the conclusion of that story. This will determine the fate of all of Nippon. And so everyone's lives, everyone is riding on this. Let's see, we do not have the brush technique to counter this yet, so we just have to try and avoid it. And these rockets, he will 
He's very crafty when he uses these techniques. Many times, he'll use them directly in tandem, or before uh, an attack is even finished, he will hit us with another. We can hurt him by power slashing his core whenever he opens, and that's actually pretty useful, but do not tarry on the, on the Celestial Brush screen for too long because he will promptly close. Okay, what do you have? Uh, I can deflect those. Let's deflect that one too. That will not open him up, but he is close. What do you have? Just this again? Well, you know I can't counter that, because all I have is Catwalk. So... Oh, no, but I can damage him here. Let's go ahead and slow down time to increase the amount of time that we can damage him. Thank you, Himiko. And let's deal some damage. Come on. Good. Good, good, good. That, there's the brush technique I needed. This is Thunderstorm. It will allow me to counter his 9 strike. Or actually, his 9 strikes, since he has two of them. And it will allow me to stun him fairly easily. Okay, there they are. And I can use Thunderstorm here. Stun him. And it will knock his core out completely this time. So we can damage him more. However, this is special because if we use Thunderstorm here. Maybe. Maybe. Come on. Use Thunderstorm. There it is. You couldn't... It was kind of hard to see, but... Real Rao actually appeared for a moment and attacked him. That's very interesting that she does that. So there's another spirit that is helping us in this battle. Another who has fallen in this quest to rid Nippon of the curse that plagues it, that holds it captive. That was bad. I didn't really counter that well. But I can't counter that well. No, 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 no. Come on. Oh, snap. I was too late. I missed the first time and I was penalized for it. Jump up here. What do you have? Oh, these, these rockets. He's using all, all of his attacks at the same time. This can get hard to counter because you may be using a brush technique to counter one thing while another thing is being shot at you. And so you have to kind of prioritize what you might be able to dodge and what you might be able to counter to get a free hit in. Like this cannot be countered, but all these rockets are lined up. Even though I, I missed all of them. No, I didn't miss all of them. I, I just missed a couple. Let's see, is that a brush technique? Yes, it is. This is the last brush technique. Blizzard. It will enable us to do more of the same. Whenever his core is exposed, we can use this to hit it, and we can also use it while the core is released from his body to... Yeah! To deal damage. And you can see I actually froze his core there, which is... Which is very fun. It's very, very fun. But it's interesting how he's using... How he's using... He Actually, you know what? I'm gonna switch to 9 Strike. But what... Because that's, that's free lightning. What I was saying is, it's interesting how he's using humanity's own evil desires against me. It's almost as if he is like the god of... Of... Evil desire, I guess. Which makes sense, because if you look at him closely... He is what appears to be a whale. Oh, I should have used Blizzard there. He's what appears to be a whale. And if you look closely, he actually looks quite a lot like um, one of the brush gods, which makes me think that maybe he is one of he is indeed one of them who is exiled because he betrayed them or something. Let's see, that can be lined up. Nope. It was I hit there. No, I just lost Godhood. Let's go ahead and hit these and take another hit. He is at a sliver. He's a sliver. If he opens up one more time, there it is. I can... Ah, oh, man. He closed. If he opens up one more time, or if that happens... No, no, no. Jump. Oh, snap. I got hit. That was not good. Okay, if you open up one more time, I can, I can finish you off. Come on. Let's go ahead and use a godly charm here, because I do not want to take another hit. It... Actually, that was it. I deflected an attack, and that is the end of Nami. Finally. Amaterasu's free. <laughs> Not bad, Furball. Well, you know the drill. Let's have one of those famous howls of yours.
Bah. That furball's always spacing out like that. Ami can't get anything done without my help. Is that doggy crying somewhere, sis? Is that why the sunshine has disappeared? Sob. I haven't seen the doggy for a while now. Did me, did me saying there's no such thing as gods create all this? Snowy, the hole digging king. I never dreamt that he, you were a god. You're gonna make Hayabusa a nervous wreck if you don't get that sun shining again soon. Amaterasu, thanks to you, we can protect our village by ourselves. But you must be strong and triumph over evil. For the canine warriors are so dearly wish to see you once more. Hmm, that god sure was burning with passion. Nom nom nom. I don't know what happened, but if that mongrel doesn't come out of hiding, I'll have to send up a really big one to re reunite that passion. So, that white wolf was actually a god. Perhaps I should have made an, an offering of my bamboo ware. It may be my fault that the sun has ceased to shine. Who would have ever thought that that rascal was really Shirinui reborn? My my, how, ca how that god loved my cherry cakes. Could this darkness be caused by hunger? Chip. Uh oh. The boss is... praying! Snowy, did something happen to you? Why is the sudden suddenly you disappeared? Fido won't roll over and play dead for evil. No brother of mine would dream of it. Ha 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 ha. Something in your brushwork touches the heart, Isun. You never abandon your life as an artist after all. When one tries to master something, it ends in either success or failure. But it is in the, the attempt itself where you find the true value. Believe in your own power and walk your own path. Isun, I see you have finally heeded your calling. Your resolve is plain to see in your drawing. It has the power to move people's hearts and inspire their faith in the gods. Amaterasu, their faith shall be your power. <laughs> he did it. My grandson did it. Look at the spirit behind this beautiful brushwork. He truly deserves the title of Celestial Envoy. It's work like this that can show the true glory of the gods and guide people to the right path. There's one thing I'm sure of, Amaterasu. You found a much better companion than I could ever be. Okay, everyone, I know it's kind of hard to see in this darkness, but get a load of my latest work. Isun, the wandering artist, presents his interpretation of the great god Amaterasu. Can you hear me, Ami? You're not floundering about without me, are you? You gotta pull yourself together. I finally chose my path, and I have the resolve to see it through. I have started to roam the land as your mis missionary, but you gotta take care of things on your own on your end too. Don't look so sad. Just psych yourself up, like we always did. Remember? Oops, I almost forgot. Check these out, everyone. It's the great god Amaterasu descending from the heavens. Pretty good, huh? Ami was smiling down from the sky just a little while ago. Something must have disturbed the furball's concentration, though. That's why the world has gone dark. Without Ami, we can't take a refreshing nap outdoors. Rice won't grow. Plants and flowers will wither. Laundry won't dry. Monsters will roam about like they own the place. In other words, our world will be a total mess. No one wants to live in a world like that. Especially me. So, come on everyone. Let's join together to call upon the great god. Let's show him Ami that we truly believe. Put your hands together and pray. 
Let's make our gratitude obvious. I mean, we shouldn't pray only when we want something. We should consider how the gods must feel once in a while. We should even take on some of their burden. If you pray with all your heart, maybe the sun will cheer up and show itself once again, lighting our world with its heavenly glow. After all, the best thing about the great god Amaterasu is that happy-go-lucky spirit. Right, Ami? Answer if you can hear me, you big furball. It's only fitting that to start this battle off, we equip the weapon that Shirinui wielded in his or her heyday way back 100 years ago. And also, make sure our godhood is full, which I believe it is. And also, heal ourselves so that we're at full health going into this. We are the strongest we've ever been. We're going to be equipping all of our items. Vengeance slips, steel fist sakes, and just as overkill, a steel soul sake. It is so fitting that Isun be the one to make us as powerful as we've ever been during this Let's Play. We are the ultimate in the Japanese deities. We have the power to destroy Yami once and for all. However, right now we are in darkness. We're shrouded in Yami's world. And if you think about Yami being the embodiment, the entity of darkness, we are technically inside Yami right now, and nothing could survive that. So, we need to make Yami step into the light. Stunning Yami and bringing him into our world, showing him the true power of Amaterasu. Dealing a lot of damage and taking some godhood, but that's fine. We have reached Shirinui's true form. And, like I said, it's only fitting that Isun be the one to bring this about. Because Isun, if we look at Isun's character throughout the Let's Play, he has been, he's gone through such a change. When we first met him, all he was concerned about was stealing the brush techniques for his own, for his own glory. But, as we progressed, you saw that he began to get, invest himself. He and, sh he and Amaterasu formed a bond like no other. And you can see this out. You can see this character development. Let's go ahead and use another godly charm. We first see it when we see Kaguya off to to the um, to the moon, to back to her own realm, because she is a member of the Moon Tribe. She is a member of Waka's tribe. You can see that with her with her goodbye to uh, to Mr. Bamboo, that he shed a tear because. That was exactly how he wanted his family to be. And as we redeflect this attack, this is, his, this is Yami's only weakness. His weakness is his greatest strength. His weakness is darkness, which we can turn into the light and weaken him, damaging his core once more. But you can see that Isun shed a tear. That was how he wanted his family to be. That was how he's wanted his entire existence to be like. And for that to happen, he gradually saw what he could become. He could have that relationship. And as we fight Yami, who is the the combination of all of his forms and every evil we've faced thus far, we see that that character development, that acceptance of Isun, and helping him grow, we would not be able to defeat this evil without him. Originally, he was just kind of a carry-on, but now, 
we see that we could not have survived without him. Let's jump over that. Jump over that. Jump over that. There. That's close. Jump over this. And those rockets are really hard to see coming. So just uh, deflect them as soon as you see anything in the upper hand part of the screen. Or just keep running and you will dodge them. Jump. Okay. And then we... There's one. I saw that one. And come on. Give me my ink back. Let's stun him with the sun. And eventually we go we go to um, Seon City where he is actually fairly comfortable. He's going through change. He's he's feeling very confident in his own abilities. He he helps us weaken Blight on his own. In fact, he is one of the easiest ways to defeat Blight. He's seeing how he's become more powerful. And yet, he's still taken off guard when he finds out that Rao was not who she was. He finds out how false I'm about to fall here. That was well, that was bad. He sees how humanity can still take him by surprise. What he thought he figured out was something that he still has things to learn about. And it humbled him greatly. And I can actually restore that. I don't know why I didn't do that in the first place. And when we finally go back to his homeland, the place where he'd be least comfortably comfortable because he's, ha he's now having to face the mistakes of his past, he goes there, he's unable to hide any of the secrets he had tried to uh, with the Matarasu, and he is forced to do some real growing. He's forced to face the fears that he ran away from, and they help him grow like nothing else did. He knows that he, he cannot handle things on his own ability. He has to embrace the fate that was predestined for him years ago. He finds himself immersed in the same legend that, um, let's go and slow down time here. He finds himself immersed in the same legend that Ishaku is in, his grandfather, and he's unable to escape it. He has become Ishaku in a sense. He's become this, this traveling artist, this wandering artist, and let's go ahead and use a godly charm here. And he has to embrace that, or war against his, his, he has to war against his selfish side. And if his selfish side wins, that means everyone he's met in this adventure, everyone that we've, we've talked to, that means they meet their end. Amaterasu, who he, who he has grown to love very dearly, will, have, will meet her end unless he acts somehow, some way. He may not a be able to enter the Ark with her, but he's able to help her like no one can. Not even Waka, who isn't even mortal. He's immortal, but this mortal is able to do so much for us. And it truly makes Isun to be the best companion I have ever seen in a video game. He's helped us so much. And now it's our time to help him and help Nippon by defeating Yami. In this battle, we're mostly just being counteroffensive, dodging his attacks, staying on the run. It will be very hard because all of his attacks are very fast, but if we're able to pull off sunrises whenever the land is shrouded in darkness, we're able to hurt the core. Not for long because Yami will protect himself by grabbing it like so, but we can jump out of the way. Now if we try to use the brush ever uh, when he, the land is not shrouded in darkness, then he will close up He will close up his core and so we cannot harm him. Let's go ahead and use power slash here on most of this. Power slash there. Good damage. Good deflection there. And I I am amazed that I am amazed with this game. Um, just to further talk about this, I am so amazed with this game. We have become Shirnui. We are Amaterasu's most powerful form. I never thought this would happen. We are uh, what Shirnui was when when she fought uh, Orochi. And I find it truly amazing that it's not like you were just more powerful back then and you're able to do this now. It's you, you've had this, which you were missing the entire time. Let's jump over this. Now be careful that you don't get too close to those pillars because the camera will change and kind of mess you up. So Yami's true form. Um, I guess I should talk about this. It is cited as humanity's desire to, to destroy with their hands. Very fitting because... Come on. Very fitting because all of this started with humanity destroying something or causing evil with their hands with Susano freeing uh, um, Orochi which started all of this come on 
Camera, don't mess me up here. Do not mess me up. Uh, let's go ahead and slow down time here. Get out of the way quickly. Get out of the way quickly without the cat statues messing us up. Blowing that away. Good. Huh. And we've actually seen this. Um, if you look at the symbol on the side of the Ark of Yamato, you will see the silhouette of, of Yami's hand. So this is, this is not Yami just adapting once more to try and counter us. This is what Yami's been hiding the whole time. Okay, the rockets. Come on, power slash them before they get started. Good. Now, one more vulnerability, and we should be able to end Yami once and for all. Come on. Come on. Jump over his laser. Jump over it again. Jump. And get over. I probably should not be standing on this hollow part because it will probably be destroyed soon. Oh, no, 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 no. Rockets. Okay. I can dodge them. Uh, Veil of Mist here to dodge them easily. Now we just need him to use what he thinks is his biggest strength once more. Come on. Shroud the land in darkness. I'm actually asking you. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. That was hard. No. Ah. Snap. Let's go ahead and use items one last time. This will be the last time I'll ever need to use it. There it is. It's darkness, and with that, he dispelled his undoing. Let's attack the core with everything we have. No, 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 no. One, two, three. Or not. That's fine. Well, I didn't have the ink for it anyway. Fantastic, Amaterasu! What a long and winding road it's been, eh, Mashare? But at last, our arch-nemesis, Yami, the Dark Lord who brought darkness upon the land of mortals, has been annihilated for all eternity. I must say, I was really surprised by your little bouncing friend. You couldn't have done it without him. <laughs> That tickles. Down, heal. You're going to lick me to death. Well, Matarasu. Time to embark to even stormier seas. Making the world a better place is never easy. You must return to the celestial plane and set things in order. O only then can you usher in a new age of peace in the mortal world. Our journey is far from over, Mashere. Now, full speed ahead. First stop, the Celestial Plane. The path to the heaven, eh? <laughs> Kinda sounds like fun. You remember what I said the first time I met you, Ami. There's no stopping me once I've made a decision. So, I'm going, Furball, and there's no way you're gonna stop me. I'm gonna pull out all the stops and inspire people's faith in you. You're gonna ha have more believers than you know what to do with. You'll see. Until then, 
Take care of yourself, you big furball. Thank you for watching. This has been Okami. And that's it. The end of one of my favorite games of all time. Now, before I start talking about anything else, I want to give a huge thanks to YouTube user So Wanna Be a Wolf for allowing me to uh, get his video of the Okami credits. Like I've, I've mentioned many times before in the Let's Play, uh, there are no credits to Okami in the Wii version, but there are in the PS3 version, and that's what I'm using right now. These credits aren't entirely accurate because they're the credits for Clover Studios, and you know they're, they include none of the names from from uh, but uh, Ready at Dawn Studios, who localized who ported the game to the Wii. But they are credits for me to talk over, and that's all that matters to me. I could have credits of like Lord of the Rings, and it'd be fine. But anyway. This Let's Play has been such a good project. I have learned way more than I expected to learn going into it. I expected just to learn more about doing annotations and doing the collectibles, um, the collectibles banners, but I've learned so much more than that. Editing things um, and do dodging copyright claims, which is the best thing to learn. I have learned a lot, and I'm really eager to apply this newfound knowledge to a further Let's Play. Since instead of learning something new in the let's, next Let's Play, I'm going to be seeking to hone the knowledge I've already learned in this one. In something a little bit simpler and a little bit shorter because it, this was a long game and I do not want to jump into a long project for, for a good uh, amount of time. But this game, it, it hit me in the feels even though this is technically my third playthrough. Um, actually, yeah, third. I've watched, I watched a Let's Play, and this is probably no surprise to you that the Let's Play that got me, that convinced me to get this game was that of Mr. Chugga Conroy. So thanks, Emil, for allowing me to watch your Let's Play and share this experience with other people. It, I would not have learned about this game if it weren't for you. Um, but yeah, I've played the game three times technically, if you include watching the Let's Play, and it's still hitting me with the feels. It is still, it was still giving me tears in my eyes. Um, now, if you think I'm a wuss, I just wouldn't say that if you invest yourself in the story, it will be it will be such a journey for you because you see that all the characters, all the main characters of this game, have character development. You see Isun as he he grows up and matures. You see Amaterasu as she learns more about herself because she had. At least, as it appeared to me, she had no memory of her previous life as Shirinui. She learned it and started remembering it along the way. And you see that character development. And you also see Waka as he gradually... He doesn't have much character development, but he develops in your eyes as you begin to know more and more about him and see him not so much as an enemy or a rival, but as a friend and ally. And that, that really excites me that there is so much character development and such a good story. Even if that story is three separate sagas being split up. But anyway, um, this Let's Play has been fantastic. I'm not going to be revealing what the next game is that I'm going to be playing, but I will just say this, it is sh much shorter, and it is very, very different from anything I've ever done. I'm really, I'm really excited going into it. But like I said, I'm not going to be revealing what it is, because I'm going to be taking a good break from Let's Plays for a while. I, I just, I need this break. It's been way too long, so many things have happened. And at the risk of, of pushing the credits a little bit further, even though they're, they're done right now, they're pretty much done, um, I just want to talk about something that happened with me. And that, it happened around episode 36. Um, if you go back to that video and watch it, I, I, let's see, how do I explain this? I am fairly, there's something going on with me, and something big happened in my life at that point. And it was my German Shepherd, Knight, 
who was who was my best friend and actually appeared in the channel once. Um, Skyward Sword episode 39. Go to the very end, and you will hear Knight. I also am talking to him throughout the episode because he's being a goofball. But um, a couple days prior to me recording episode 39 or 36 of Okami. My German Shepherd, in the span of two or three days, had deteriorated to enough. He's six years old, by the way. He deteriorated to enough so that we had to put him down. And he went through the best times of my life. In fact, you know, the most eventful things happened in my life in the years that he was alive. And he, he helped me through those. I started my channel partially because of him. He did affect me in that. He helped me grow a lot. And he was with me for so many things. And... He passed away during this Let's Play, and it hit me hard. Um, it was immediately after me getting s me getting sick, so a lot of the time, me missing episodes was either because I was I was sick again or mourning him, and it it had really it really hit me hard. So this Let's Play is dedicated to you, Knight. Um, you reminded me a lot of Amaterasu, all of her interactions with how she touched the lives of other people, despite having an inability to talk reminds me of how you touched my life. Sorry if I'm being a little bit sad for you guys, but I just want to dedicate this let's play to him because it affected me the most throughout this. And I don't want to I don't want to talk about this quite so much anymore because I'm getting a little bit emotional, but I'll just I'll just keep it at that. So, for beating the game of Okami, that gives us a battle ranking of not so good, but I don't care. We we did this. We totally did this. We did. We had 65 hours and 32 minutes. Actually, I didn't know this screen was there. That's cool. Days and stuff. No deaths. Oh yeah. 800. Oh wow. Nice. Okay. And you're seeing all these symbols. We're actually unlocking things here. We are unlocking different achievements. Did I miss one? Did I miss? Did I miss one? There's like a question mark on the bottom. Hopefully I didn't mi I don't think I missed one. Why would I miss one? That would be dumb. I'll put it on screen if I missed one or not. Um, so our playtime was 65 hours, 32 minutes, and 33 seconds. Uh, some of that was off screen, granted, but that's still a very impressive playtime. I think Skyward Sword was something along the line of 39 hours or something? Maybe I just have 39 in my head or something? Uh, 120 days passed in the game. Okay. 86 saves, so you guys can see. How many saves were done? Uh, zero deaths, eight, a lot of stuff. Now you see all these symbols alongside of it. I will be explaining those in one more episode of Okami. It will not be on a scheduled day. It will just release at some point. So stay tuned for that. It will release some at some point during my my respite. And uh, yeah, it will be showing some of the bonus things that you get for completing the game and unlocking a new game plus. So yeah, we got, wow, we got a lot of praise. Okay, let's press A here. Congratulations! We completed the game of Okami. Congratulations to you too, and there's one more thing I'm expecting, but I'm not sure if they're going to show it. Maybe? You got presents from Isun! I guess this is part of the bonus thing or whatever. We obtain, obtained Karmic Transformer 1, 2, and Karmic Returner, Stray Bead. Yes, that was the last Stray Bead, by the way. That was 100th Stray Bead. We get it for completing the game. Nothing special, just completing the game, we get 100th Stray Bead. And by doing that, we unlock a new, uh, what is it, what, divine, no, holy, holy artifact. We get the String of Beads, and I'll be going over that next episode as well. Uh, Karmic Transformer 3 and 4, awesome, and I will not be telling anything about these till next time, 6, 7, and awesome, 8, cool, 9, cooler, because that's my favorite. Okay, this is what the question mark was. The secret theater has been added to the gallery. For completing the game and having a completed save file, uh, we get the secret theater, which, again, stuff for the next time, for the bonus episode. You can save the game here. This save file will be used to start your new adventure. Saving to a new file instead of overriding is recommended. Would you like to save the game? Not yet, because I would like to thank you guys one last time for watching. And give some stats as for the end of the, end of the Let's Play. I did this in Skyward Sword, and I would like to do it here, because this is a good place to do it. 
Um, over the course of the Let's Play, I have accumulated something along the lines of- I haven't written it down because this is kind of a spontaneous decision of showing these stats. Over the course of the Let's Play, I have accumulated over 75 subscribers. I will put the exact amount on screen. I'm pretty sure it's over 75. And a couple thousand views. We have accumulated a lot of views from either Pals Play or stuff like that. Um, and let's see, what else? What other stats? Uh, my equipment is the same. It's exactly the same, so I'm not even going to post that. But these cool stats are fun to do. And we've also uh, passed an important date. This channel is now officially one year old. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I'm hoping to release some video on that, so keep me, keep me um, hounded on that. Uh, remind me to release that video. Over the course of my vacation, I'm going to be releasing... Um, I'm not sure what to call it. Some bonus material? Not for the game, not for this game, but some bonus channel stuff. So stay for tuned for those. I'm not going to be telling you guys what those are, but it's something that I have talked about in this game. I talked about it a little while ago when we were going through Kamui getting stray beats. Um, it involves some new stuff, new equipment I got. So I'll be I'll be doing that on the channel. Um, yeah, that's that's it. Bonus episode for Okami, and that's it. Um, like I said, the next Let's Play will be something much simpler, much shorter. A lot of you are probably happy about that. It will be uh, less than half the length of this Let's Play. So that's that's something to look forward to. I'm looking forward to it because, like I said, this game is, was stinking hard. Not to... Ah, uh, uh, man. I, I'm rambling at this point, but it's fine. Um, this game was very hard. It, it wasn't the gameplay that was hard at all. That was easy, um, but... The annotations, the annotations for all of the collectibles, those were so time-consuming. Um, the the banners or the text boxes for every enemy, every stray bead, every collectible, those were really hard too. I mean, they were time-consuming. And then editing those into an episode. Let me just tell you, those were that was actually kind of funny. Um, how I made sure that they were all the same size is going back as I would go, I would upload the. Um, I would upload the first episode into my editor, hold my thumb on a certain part of the scroll of the first text box, hold my thumb on there for the screen, and then resize the the episode's text box to that. I know there are better ways for me to do that, but that's some. it was just a quirky thing I did the second episode, and it just stuck, so I did that. But yeah, I learned a lot. It was a great Let's Play, great game. If you, do, if, like, if you want this game, if you like this game, it's on a bunch of consoles, so, you, you know, if... Unless you're an Xbox Soulist, you can get this game. You can get it for the PS3, the PS2, or the PS4? Yeah, you can get it for the PS4 because it's backwards compatible. Um, you could also get it for the Wii, um, and by association, you can also get it for the Wii U because the Wii U is also backwards compatible. So, if you own any gaming consoles, get it. Unless you're part of the PC Master Race, which I'm not a part of, but then you can just cry because... I'm not going to get into that. Okay, I I think I'm done. I think I'm done with my rant. Um, thank thank you so much for watching. Uh, you guys have been really supportive during this Let's Play. And I will see you guys next time for Pal Plays Okami, where we will be going over the bonus stuff. And if you like this episode, then comment. If you didn't like this episode, comment and tell me how I can make the next episode. The next, actually. The next finale, so, I, so that you would like it. Tell me what I did wrong in the finale, because I've only done it a couple times before. So I'll see you guys next time, because I'm going to stop rambling and put down the controllers. Okay, next episode, we will finish up the, side, the remaining side quests in Skyloft. But, I, as I told you, I'll have my German Shepherd do that thing. Knight, come here. Knightly, come here. Up. Come here, bud. Come here. Okay. Come here, Knight. Come. Good boy. Sit. Hopefully you guys can hear this. Ready? Night. Sing! Sing! Sing, bud! Good boy. Oh! That was a good one, bud. Sing! Good boy. Good boy, hum. That wasn't a hum. Just a second. Night. Night. Sit. No. No. Shh. Night. Hum.
Good boy. Okay, one more for the end of the episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I really do mean that. You guys are the reason why I'm happy in these episodes, because I know that I'm actually recording something for someone to watch it. So, thank you, and next time we'll do more side quests. Until then, night, sing, sing! Good boy. Yeah. Okay, I'll see you then. Yeah, you're a good boy. You did good. You're on the internet now. You're on the internet. You're a good boy. Kisses. Mm. Good boy. You licked the mic. <laughs>